G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the Asshole. Let's go. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to stop using nonsense baby talk? I really need Reddit for this one, as I genuinely don't know if I'm the asshole. Throw away, as my sister has Reddit, all fake names. So my 34 female sister, 27 female Alana, has always been somewhat infantile, but in the last year, she has stepped up her game in the category of nonsense baby talk. She was seeing a guy last year who I think liked it, which might be why, but it's literally every second sentence and it is driving me nuts. Some examples, she's arrived at my house and asked if she could put some juice in the fridge. Turned out she wanted to put juice in the fridge. On seeing my six month old crying, she loudly said, oh no, don't cry. And she's asked if we have any yeast in the frizz, ice in the freezer. You get the idea. It's endless and very annoying. My older sister, 35 female, Este and I, have chosen to combat this by pretending we don't know what she means until she says it correctly. My mum does nothing about it as Alana is the youngest and always babied a bit. Mum has even translated the baby talk for me and Este when we are pretending we don't understand. Anyway, yesterday Alana was at my house for my birthday and the baby talk was dialed up to 100. We had a giant cookie for a cake and later in the evening, Alana handed my husband a plate and requested a slice of the cake of cooks, which is a slice of cookie cake. This was too much for me and I told her to stop with the made up words. She replied, but it's cute. And I informed her it was not cute and I asked her to cut it out. She refused and told me, I can do whatever I want and nobody can tell me what to do or something along those lines, to which my mum agreed. I then said that she had to make sure not to use the nonsense words in front of my six month old as I wanted her learning the right words, which was really just an excuse to stop her from doing it. Alana pointed out that Este made used up words with her two year old. Este says tummer instead of tummy, but that's the only one she could think of. I said that what Este does with her daughter is irrelevant because I'm the one asking Alana to stop. That bit might not be relevant, but I'm adding it for full transparency. When my husband reappeared with a cake, I refused to let Alana have it until she asked for it properly. She gave me a death glare, but did ask properly, albeit sulkily. My am I the asshole is twofold here. Was I the asshole to withhold the cake until she asked for it like a grown up? And was I the asshole for telling her to stop talking nonsense in the first place? She is, after all, a fully grown adult who can do what she likes, but I honestly can't tell you how irritating it is to hear nonsense talk all the time from a 27 year old woman, and she had dialed it up to 11 for some reason. My mum agreed with Alana, obviously. Este wasn't there, but agreed with me when she was told what happened, as did my husband. I'd love to put my foot down and tell her to cut it out every time, but I need the judgement on Reddit for this, as I don't know if I'm blinded by my unreasonableness by how annoying it is. And now in the comments, not the asshole. I haven't even met your sister, and I just need her to stop so badly. OP replies with a crying laughing emoji. Okay, so I use made up words a lot. Like I use words for things that they weren't really meant for. I call my wireless earbuds Pokeball, for example, just cause it's round. Or I call my siblings as hot dogs, but I only do it when I'm extremely bored or sad, just as a little mood lifter for myself and nobody cares. That said, I wouldn't be able to stand your sister, not for a single day. Her way of speaking is definitely not cute when used as constantly as you say. At most, it should be exclusively used as dumb slang for texting. Not the asshole. It's not cute, it's weird and annoying as all get out. You're not wrong to point out it's ridiculous and ask her to stop. I would also be ignoring it and not responding when she uses baby talk until she uses actual words. But I also hold hope that if she's around your children, as your children get older, they're going to say things. Kids don't hold back at all. It's not even baby talk? Mixing up vowel sounds is not part of a typical child language development. It's just weird. And OP replies, that's what my husband said. It's just nonsense really, isn't it? It really is. I have two little kids and none of what you're describing are baby and toddler speech patterns. 
She has found her own brand of weird, and it's the actual least cute thing imaginable. Not the asshole. Just tell her, I have no idea what you're talking about, every single time, because if what you are typing is an accurate representation of what she's saying, I have no idea how she expects anyone else to pass any of that. And OP says, this is largely how we've chosen to combat it. It seems to have made her double down. I think because she thinks that we're in the wrong and she's standing up for herself. The doubling down is something called an extinction burst. It is her resisting the boundary you're setting in hopes that you'll give up. The tactic of saying you don't understand over and over and over again is exhausting, but it's absolutely going to work if you stand firm. Do not engage unless she asks in adult language. And back up to the post, there is an edit update. Thanks for all the comments. I am trying to read through them on and off while looking after my daughter, and some of them are really making me laugh. To answer a few questions, yes, I've addressed this with her before, as has Este. This is just the first time I've flat out refused to follow up on what she's said. She's pulled the, but you do it with your daughter card on Este before too, so clearly she thinks that's a good argument. The only people present were me, my mum, Alana, and my husband. It was just a low-key thing, so no big crowd. Este and her husband joined later via Zoom. We played Joke Boat on Jackbox and I came fifth. Alana is generally very sweet and fun, but definitely immature and can be super annoying. This gets on my last nerve very quickly and I can be hard on her, hence my am I the asshole. Usually my husband is good at pointing out if I'm being harsh, but he was totally on my side here. Yes, I used the Haim sisters' names on purpose, and yes, I'm smug I get to be Danielle. Anyway, my mum just came over and I spoke to her. She agreed very quickly that it's annoying AF, but said that Alana is working on standing up for herself, and my mum wanted to support that. I was like, sure, but pick your battles. My mum agreed and said that she'll talk to her about it when it's just them, as she thought that agreeing with them in the moment would have made Alana defensive and she wouldn't have listened, which is probably true. I mentioned that some commenters had said about it being my house and me being able to ask her to stop, and she agreed with this and reiterated that she would talk to Alana. That's all I have for now. I'm going to talk to Este, and I think we're going to go for the talk to her seriously, treat her like an adult approach and try to be a bit kinder about it. Thanks again for the comments, Este and I are feeling very vindicated. And now with the actual update. As I said before, Este and I feel incredibly vindicated by the judgment and the comments in general, as we are always being told by our mum not to be hard on poor Alana. It's got to the point where we don't rip into her like we do each other. Which is a shame, as we are English, and our primary love language is insults and sarcasm. Anyway, I digress. I got my chance to confront Alana on Saturday evening, when Alana and my mum came over for another round of Jackbox, and Alana asked me if I liked her new jump. I replied, your what? And she leveled with me a slightly smug, unblinking stare. My mum jumps in and tells me, she means her jumper, and Alana interrupts her, saying, she knows what I mean. I can say jump if I like. Clearly, she has decided to double down, but I had my Reddit voices in my ear and I was prepared. I asked her to stop talking in nonsense words and she told me that it's a thing that all millennials do and I needed to get over it and said that I do it too and gave Prosec as an example. Prosecco. I disagreed, then told her that I'd been Googling it Translation, I've asked a bunch of Redditors, and that it had made me wonder if she was doing it as a reaction to no longer being the youngest in the family. She was very affronted by this, telling me she had been doing it way longer than the arrival of the kids. I said that she had been doing it much more recently. My mum agreed with me. Alana looked livid at this and kept spluttering that it wasn't the case. I then said that in my Google research I'd read that it could be a comfort for anxiety and asked her if this is what it was. She seemed very annoyed about my trying to diagnose her or make it into an issue. In my opinion, she was trying to be cute and funny and I was ruining it with my concern for her well-being. She told me that I was very weird for thinking that it's a big deal and for Googling it and I said that I was doing this because she's far too old to be talking like a Yoda baby. 
I then said that if it wasn't a reaction to anxiety, could she please stop, because it annoys me a lot and I don't want to be annoyed when I hang out with her. Full props to Reddit for my phrasing here. She stared at me in silence for a good 20 seconds. I could see her brain whirring as she tried to calculate a reason to say no, but in the end, my mum quietly interjected with, that's a reasonable request, isn't it? And Alana gave a hefty, defeated sigh and said fine. I said thank you and we swiftly moved on. I'm hopeful that that's the end of it. I'm so glad that I turned to Reddit for this one as all the advice worked perfectly and I'm going to try and keep it in mind with all my interactions with Alana going forward. And now in the comments, I'm laughing here. Just the mental image of her sitting there trying to figure out a way of continuing this asshattery while not proclaiming that she's in need of therapy. As a millennial, born in 1989, I can assure you that I don't baby talk, and I feel slightly offended at the suggestion that we all do it. But ripping into my younger brother and sister with sarcasm and insults, I fully intend. It's definitely our English love language. Our next post is titled, Would I be the asshole for saying no to my boyfriend's dream apartment? So me, female 22, and my boyfriend, male 22, are moving in together. We have been apartment hunting this week and found a couple suitable options. There is one apartment I really like, APT1, that is around 110 meters squared and rent would be around 1400. This apartment is located in a nice neighborhood around 10 blocks from my parents' house. I like this apartment because the price is good for the size and location and it's also quite pretty. My boyfriend, however, prefers another apartment, APT2, that is around 140 meters squared and rent is around 1600. The apartment is in the dead center of the city we live in and literally next door to his parents' house. As in, if we sit at the balcony and look to the right, we can see and talk to his parents in their own balcony. My issue with APT2 is that it's not very nice looking on the inside. It's an older building, so the tiles in the kitchen and bathrooms are very outdated and worn. It comes with some furniture, even my grandma would have gotten rid of already. The kitchen is all mismatched, as if it was fixed by someone who took apart another kitchen and reused the parts. It's overall not a nice looking apartment, and for me to be happy in it, I would need to change pretty much everything. I'm an interior designer. The look of my own apartment is important to me, but that would also be quite expensive to do, and there are certain things that we wouldn't be able to change because it's a rental, and the owner would not allow it but my boyfriend still really wants it because it's very center of the city, close to where he does language classes and a big supermarket that he likes to shop at. And APT1 would be around one or two kilometers away from these things. He uses his mum's car, but she said that he can't take it if he moves out, even if she does not drive. APT1 is not available for visitation yet, and APT2 needs to be rented today or tomorrow. I need an answer soon, and I'm afraid I'm being unreasonable if I say no. And now in the comments, is it actually his dream apartment or is the location just useful? If I was 22 again moving in with my girlfriend, there is no way in hell I'd want my parents close enough to hear us swinging from the chandeliers. And OP says, it is definitely more the location for him, but he does like the size of the apartment as well and doesn't care how it looks like. I don't think they would be able to hear us from their house, and we aren't exactly swinging from the chandelier people, but point taken. My suggestion would be to start looking for apartment 3. No assholes here. Especially as they haven't even seen the other apartment in person. Pictures can be deceiving. Not the asshole. I would veto it purely on the fact that he's right next to his parents. It needs to be a clean break for both of you to really mature properly. Like getting your own car. Is there nothing in the middle that's viable? And OP replies, We tried looking for other options in that region, but they end up being either too small or too expensive. Both these options we have are rare finds. Honestly, I would say to hold off and wait for your apartment. You already know you're going to dislike living there. You both should agree on that place. No assholes here. But you do know he has the right to say no to the apartment you want too, right? And OP says, yes I do. It's not that he doesn't like the one I like, he just loves this other one. He seems to be pretty torn as well, to be honest. If the apartment was prettier, would you be okay with it? If the apartment looked the same but the parents weren't so close, would you be okay with it? 
ask the landlord if it can come unfurnished or if there will be any finishing done before move-in. Maybe you can get it cleaned up. I'm not sure what the market is like where you are, but sometimes it's worth applying anyway and then just decline the offer if you get one. I'm going no assholes here. And now onto the update. I met with my boyfriend the other day that I made the post and we had a very long discussion about the whole apartment situation. By the end of it, we decided to go with apartment one. I must point out at this point, we had not seen any of the apartment in person, only through pictures. We had a scheduled visit to apartment two the next morning and we didn't know when apartment one would be available for visitation. The morning comes and we visit apartment two, we didn't want to cancel last minute, and it was not as bad as the pictures. My boyfriend absolutely loved it. I was pleasantly surprised by it. After we leave, I get a call that apartment one is available for visitation and we could go in immediately. So off we went and saw that one too. It was not very good. Pictures of apartments really are deceiving y'all. It felt very small, despite saying that it was 110 meters squared. The bedrooms were so tiny, our bed barely fit in the master one, our closet and desk did not fit in the second one, and also the balcony was over a neighbor's house, and we could fully see into their living room, which is kind of awkward. It also probably had very thin walls, as we could hear children running around and yelling as if they were in our own apartment. So we both said no to apartment one, and ended up going with apartment two. We had a meeting with the owner and he assured us he would get rid of any unwanted furniture and we were welcome to renovate any part of the apartment and he would give us a discount on the rent to cover the costs. We are working up a contract and will most likely be signing the lease this week. We already have the keys and everything. Also, in regards of my in-laws, we sat down with them for dinner and clear boundaries were set. We will be covering the part of the balcony that overlooks theirs, they will not be getting a copy of our keys, and they are not to expect visits from us too often. I am hopeful and excited at the prospect of this apartment, and even though 98% of you guys told us to run for the hills, I have a very good feeling that I made the right decision. Thank you all for your time and your judgement. And now in the comments, thanks for the update. It always amazes me how different a property is in person from advertised pictures. Enjoy your new home. And OP says, it really is different. Never again trusting pictures like that. And thank you. I was in property sales for a while. Nobody ever attaches unflattering photos to the ad because it defeats the purpose. You want it to generate traffic and hopefully a sale or lease. So you always highlight the best features and qualities. Why provide photos of the chalk outlines on the floor and chocolate milk stains on the walls and ceilings when you can instead provide photos of the views or the amenities that are nearby? Glad it worked out, OP. Look forward to, am I the asshole for being annoyed my boyfriend's parents are always in my apartment? And OP replies, hopefully I won't have to do that. Sounds like the solution was worked out in the best way possible and you both ended up happy. A lot of people on Reddit seem to hate in-laws and can't imagine a healthy family dynamic, so no surprise they were telling you to run. And OP says, I get along with mine better than I do with my own parents. I'm fully aware that I'm an exception though. Most people seem to not get along or like their in-laws. People who are happy don't post here. I have amazing in-laws. I never make posts about them. Who wants to hear about great people who babysit my kid, take us on vacation, and are really kind and thoughtful? That's not what this sub is about. And on that happy note, that's where I'm going to end the video today, guys. I really do hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.